morning, everyone. Uh, last week, the <coughs> Senate Finance Committee, on a bipartisan 9 to 2 vote, approved Senate Bill 541 to improve the state's historic preservation incentive uh, tax credit program. Uh, based on information we began to collect uh, last year at a public workshop, uh, study after study has proven, and we're going to hear a lot more about that uh, uh, this morning, that these tax credits have been very effective in encouraging revitalization at both the state and the federal level. Uh, in many of these cases, the older, these older buildings were once the, the pride of the community, but unfortunately, they're often today uh, symbols of blight and neglect and urban decay. Uh, this legislation in both the House and the Senate uh, will allow Pennsylvania to transform more of our older blighted buildings and to encourage the revitalization in our downtowns and in our communities, uh, large and small. Uh, there's uh, basically the, the goal is to extend the program to uh, look at uh, what other states have done, including West Virginia, to bring more dollars to the program and just to, to make it a little bit more flexible so it can be better utilized in the future. I want to uh, thank Representative James, Representative Freeman, uh, Senator Schwank, my, my co-sponsor in the Senate for their bipartisan support on this, and uh, let me turn it over to, uh, to Representative Freeman. Uh, thank you, Senator. Thank you. Uh, first, I would definitely like to uh, make note of and thank uh, Senator Dave Bible for his leadership on this issue. He has been consistent and tireless in his efforts to promote this. Uh, it is a good uh, revision of the historic tax credit bill. Uh, of program, I should say, and will go a long way in improving the program and making it far more effective and reaching far more communities in terms of the resources that would be available. Uh, by enacting the changes that are envisioned in our legislation, we would put Pennsylvania in a far more competitive position uh, with our neighboring states, allowing us to leverage uh, more investment to rehabilitate uh, far more older structures and buildings uh, in our communities than we do today. Uh, Pennsylvania, as Mindy Crawford could tell you, and my thanks to Mindy too for her advocacy for this uh, legislation. But Pennsylvania, as Mindy can tell you, has actually been very strong in using federal tax credits. But it's only about, I believe it's 1% of the federal tax credits actually utilize the state tax credits because the, the funding that's set aside for the tax credits is currently too low. It's, it's $3 million, projects are capped at $50,000 each. And what we envision in this legislation is uh, expanding that to $30 million in tax credits with a cap of 2.5 million for each project. That will have a far greater effect in terms of utilizing those dollars and matching them up with federal historic tax credits to get the best bang for your buck uh, in terms of rehabilitating older uh, economic structures. Um, the economic impact has been uh, tremendous from historic tax credits in those states that utilize them or have programs to that effect. And again, Pennsylvania has a strong experience in, in utilizing the federal tax credits, but we need to do more in terms of the state tax credits, and that's what our legislation is all about. Let me just note um, that we need to be on a par with our neighboring states if we really want to be effective at how we use historic tax credits. Uh, in Ohio, they set aside uh, $60 million in tax credits. In West Virginia, a state much smaller than ours, they set aside 30 million, which is what we are advocating for in this legislation. Um, in other states, 40 to 60 percent of the federal tax credits uh, used is attributable to existing state tax credits. Uh, and in the case of Ohio, um, 60 percent was a result of, uh, of their program in terms of uh, uh, being able to draw down the federal tax credits. Let me note that the importance of rehabilitating our older historic buildings and structures here in Pennsylvania, uh, they are part of our heritage. Um, the history of the communities uh, that grew up in this commonwealth uh, contributed uh, to the economic vitality of our commonwealth throughout the ages and provided excellent places for people to live, raise a family, work, and uh, experience the true essence of community is attributable to the fact that we have great older communities scattered throughout our commonwealth. Um, the buildings that we are seeking to rehabilitate have a strong historic heritage, and they are well built. They were built during a period of great construction in most cases and are solid. They just need some rehabilitation tender loving care to make them once again great assets within those communities. By rehabilitating more historic structures, we stabilize our older communities uh, that have gone through rough transitions historically, but have the great potential to have what architects call great bone in terms of the structures that exist within their communities uh, to create a great revitalization in these older places. And to reestablish a sense of place, 
We oftentimes in our modern world forget the importance of a simple place. But that is the foundation of community, that you know when you're in a certain place, that you can look at certain buildings and there's a history attached to them, that you walk down certain streets within that community, and you can feel the vitality and feel the long history that they, those buildings and structures evoke. This legislation uh, offers opportunities, economic opportunities, and Lee James will talk about the economic impact uh, of our legislation, but they offer real opportunity to create jobs, both directly and indirectly, and also to enable entrepreneurs, creative entrepreneurs, to rediscover our older urban uh, areas, our older small towns, small cities, and to make them vital, uh, uh, active uh, places of commerce uh, and of, of business and of uh, every other endeavor that makes for a great community. So this legislation really seeks to provide the key element to making our older communities once again stable, vibrant, and successful places here in Pennsylvania. And we look forward to the uh, enactment of this legislation to move that effort forward. I'd like to turn the program over to Lee James. Thank you, Representative. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, my name is Lee James. I come from Western Pennsylvania, a small town called Oil City, which is about 13 miles from the birthplace of the oil industry, uh, Drake Well, some of you may have heard of. Uh, we have plenty of history out there, and I've always had an interest in it, even in high school, which is probably pretty rare for a guy. Uh, enjoyed it there, and uh, I, we were talking earlier, I made a, a trip to Williamsburg, Virginia, 12 times. My wife won't let me go back anymore. She says there's <laughs> other places to go, uh, and she's right, of course. Uh, but it's sort of like our historic preservation mecca, and uh, if, if, if you've never been there, you owe it to yourself to see what it was like a couple hundred years ago. Uh, but I want to add just, just a few supplemental comments about the actual impact to our uh, economy. Uh, there was reference to an economic study which was uh, asked for last year, 2018. Preservation PA hired Donovan. Rifkema and Place at Economics to study the economic benefits of the Pennsylvania state tax credit. And they also looked at other states. Uh, they found, as was mentioned, that Ohio had a $60 million cap, West Virginia had a $30 million cap, New York and Virginia have no cap whatsoever, and we're kind of stuck at $3 million. And it's not, it's not satisfactory, it's not enough. Uh, but in Pennsylvania, since the program was begun, there have to actually have been 15 million in uh, Pennsylvania state tax credits awarded. The projected value of the projects is $700 million. That's 47 to one. Uh, a, a ratio like that is actually better than uh, investing uh, a comparable amount of money in, in say, manufacturing. About a third of the credits are actually returned to the Treasury, but the projects go on, and that part is good too. So let me give you just one quick example. Uh, a million dollar investment in historic rehabilitation, it generates about six and a half direct jobs. It generates about five and a half indirect jobs. What about income? Well, the income, salaries, that sort of thing, for approximately four hundred thousand dollars for that million dollar investment goes to direct income, about three hundred thousand into indirect income, and about eight hundred and fifty thousand in other ancillary uh, supportive roles. About fifty percent of federal tax credits are also attributable to existing state tax credits. And what do I mean by that? It means the more state tax credits that are used, and especially here in Pennsylvania, the more it will attract federal tax credits as well. And that's very significant and I think very important. So states with strong tax credit uh, programs attract investment, not so much in Pennsylvania. We want to cure that. A higher cap is needed. Uh, thank you all for your support. Um, okay, you're on. You're on. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Mindy Crawford. I'm the Executive Director of Preservation Pennsylvania. We're a statewide nonprofit organization that advocates for good policy and good programs that help to uh, revitalize our very rich heritage. And I'm very uh, honored to be here today, and I, I, I really I have to thank Senator Argel and Senator Schwenk, Representative Freeman, and Representative James for just basically 
letting me push them to, to, to jump in with both feet, and they have just been wonderful, starting with uh, the workshop last uh, March that Senator Arbuckle pulled together, where we were able to actually hear from users of the credits and from uh, others who benefit from the credits how important it is for us to increase the state tax credit. When the original legislation was passed in 2012 uh, with an annual uh, cap of $3 million, we knew that that wasn't going to be enough, and that has certainly played out. The most recent round of requests would have required $76 million to provide the full 25% to the credit projects that came that, that were um, uh, requested. So we knew that when it was time to reauthorize uh, this program, that that cap had to be raised. So as they, as we work forward to reauthorize the um, program, we knew it was important again to see to see that um, the economic impact is real. We always talk about the economics, but uh, it, you have to have the, the information to back it up. So Donovan Ripkema in Place Economics was engaged by Preservation Pennsylvania uh, to undertake this study to show not just the impact of Pennsylvania, but how other states are using it, states with much larger applications allocations as Representative James uh, referred to. Ohio, New York, Virginia, and West Virginia were competing directly with them for good preservation projects. West Virginia has the smallest allocation of those, as was mentioned, of $30 million. $3 million in Pennsylvania seems a little small. So this study also looks at Missouri and North Carolina, two states that are strong, strong users of the tax credits and have been doing it for a long time. The report uh, compares the activity in Pennsylvania with the activity in all of those states. And obviously Pennsylvania falls short because we can see a direct correlation with a strong state tax credit in those states and an increase in federal tax credits. Pennsylvania has always been a very strong user of the federal tax credits, but we're losing ground. We're sort of on a uh, you know, straight trajectory for our credits. Where we see our other states that have stronger state tax credits, their numbers of projects are going up. The developers who take on these large vacant buildings that are off the tax rolls and revitalize them, revitalizing communities, you know, they're working all over the country. And the developers I talk to say to me, you're not competing with the other states. And given a choice of being able to do a federal and a state tax credit on a project in one state versus maybe just the federal credit and a, and a slight chance for a state tax credit in Pennsylvania, it's not very attractive. So in order for Pennsylvania to be as strong as it can be, with its rich, rich inventory of historic resources and wonderful communities to be revitalized, Pennsylvania has to increase the allocation for this. And I think as you look at the study, um, it, please pick up the packet if you haven't already done so. There's an executive summary of this study. Uh, it is posted on Preservation Pennsylvania's website. Take a look at it, and you will see in very clear black and white numbers the impact of a strong state tax credit and how Pennsylvania can enjoy those same benefits. Um, we are less attractive, and that is very sad for me because I've been working in historic preservation in Pennsylvania for 35 years, um, worked with several of these guys for almost that amount of time, and uh, you know we feel very strongly about the importance of increasing this tax credit, and I, uh, I, I really um, am looking forward to seeing us take it through the finish line and to be able to have even more projects, great projects in Pennsylvania. Thank you. Any questions? Bob and I, Representative James, will handle the easy ones. She will get all <laughs> the difficult ones. <laughs> oh, I would like, I'm sorry, I would like to just clarify one point that Representative James said, uh, is that the uh, about 35% of the tax credit allocation is returned to the Treasury in uh, jobs, taxes, and other economic activity before the state actually issues the tax credit. So what that means is by the time the tax credit is issued to the developer to use, a good portion of the money that is being provided as a tax credit has already been returned to the Treasury. And then after the project is finished and placed in service and the credit is used, it continues to generate economic so it's there, the credits aren't being returned, but the uh, return of the money is coming back into the state. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming out.